So in this video we're going to look at how to write introductions for um, an individual research project. We're going to start off by looking at literature reviews and introductions and thinking about what the difference is between these two sections and um, as often there's quite a bit of confusion. Then we're going to focus in specifically on introductions and what we're looking for in that section and then we're going to look at some examples from um, engineering students scoping studies or interim reports. It's really important to understand the purpose and the difference between the introduction and the literature review to avoid the seepage between um, the sections. This happens um, when maybe ideas are unnecessarily repeated between sections because um, you weren't sure which bit to write where or it can also happen when you have to keep refer returning back to a topic because you didn't explain it sufficiently uh, in the right place. So the overall kind of objectives of, of the introduction and the literature review combined is to really funnel down towards your aim and set the narrative of why is your research needed and what is the context. This usually starts off with establishing um, the real world need. So maybe you're looking at something that is, um, has very widespread use and you can show that, or maybe you are um, tackling a real problem. And maybe it's the both, you know, tackling a problem with something that's used very widely. Obviously, um, engineering projects vary significantly. And while some have a very clear, neat, um, real world need, other ones can be more theoretical. However you do it, it's important to show that there is a need. It might, if you are more in the theoretical side, it might be useful to think about what is interesting about your topic. Why is there an interest and a, a desire to study it? Think about it more in that terms, but there has to be something to motivate this research to make it worth investing time in. Then we move on to the research context of so what is already known about the topic. Probably you're not in a completely new area and it's important to show where you fit in the research community, what is already known and what are you building on. Then the next crucial step is to show a gap. So um, you've shown what's known, now what isn't known. And that then leads to your research. Your research should be solving a real world need or an interest um, and it should be filling the gap that you've identified. So how is this information split between the introduction and the literature review? It will depend slightly on, on, the, on the particular um, project, but in general, the real world importance, so the giving the problem, um, is given in the introduction. What is known and the gaps is mainly discussed in detail in the literature review, but you might have a couple of sentences stating you know, the gaps in the introduction, but most of the discussion will be in the literature review. Then the explanations of key concepts and definitions will be mainly in the literature review, because in the introduction, it's just really ruthless, ruthlessly focused on justifying the need for your research. And any explanation of terms should only be what is um, kind of essential for the reader to know at that point in time but more detailed um, descriptions come later in the literature review. So the introductions. The introductions are really, like I said, this um, ruthlessly establishing the need for your research. Why do we need your research? Um, it might be helpful to think about your applying for funding, imagining that you're applying for funding. Why should somebody invest in your research? Why is it needed? It's also setting the context. You are to write for um, somebody who's educated, but not an expert in your field. So you need to set the context. If you think about it like a Google map, you can zoom in um, to a very, very specific point on a Google map. That's like your research. It's highly specialised and very detailed. But when you're zoomed in on a Google map, you can have no idea where in the world you are and you need to really zoom out to see where you are and for that 
detail to make sense. It's the same with your research. You're focused and narrowed in, but you need to start off zoomed out and then take your reader down into the specific focus of your project. The introductions at the end of the introductions, you will state your aims and objectives um, clearly. The language you use obviously is important in the introduction. Paragraph unity is really important. So one paragraph, one idea, and then each paragraph will, will develop um, a new separate point. The flow, it needs to keep moving, sounds obvious, but it needs to keep moving forward and narrowing down your introduction. You don't want to keep returning back to your ideas. You want to keep narrowing that focus, going through the, what is the need, um, and what is the gap, focusing down that leads to your aims. Definitions and explanations should only be given on a need to know basis. So where it's essential, if you're using a piece of technology that, note that an educated reader couldn't be expected to know, then obviously you need to briefly explain that. But don't give more than is essential at this point um, and give it as briefly as possible and then more detail in your literature review. The examples that you use should be you should be focused, so to use examples to support a point, but where you use them, make sure they're focused and again that they're leading where you want them to go. So um, one student report was, was on a project looking at um, considering a water reuse system um, on a building at Southampton University and the student you know, explained the global problem of water shortage, then narrowed this down to developing countries, narrowed it down to the United Kingdom, narrowed it down to water shortage, water shortage in the southern England and then said, for example, in Southampton. So that wasn't a randomly chosen example. They wanted to land up at Southampton because that's where they're going to do their study. They, did, they didn't just pick any random city in the southern England. They deliberately chose the one that was, um, that was, a, that was a real example, but that was also leading where they wanted to go. So next we're going to look at a couple of different um, examples of introductions from um, engineering students' scoping studies. Scoping studies are like an interim report, so part way through their project. This wasn't their final um, introduction for their research paper. So I'm going to show you a few paragraphs at a time. I would suggest that you pause um, the recording, read the, um, read the text, and then we will then I'll give you some, some thoughts about it. So this first example starts off by explaining what an interim report is and explaining the assessment. This um, isn't helpful. We don't need to explain or introduce the assignment. You, in your introduction, you should be explaining and introducing the topic. Um, you just go straight in at explaining your topic and setting that context for that. You don't need to explain the assignment. So personally, I would delete these two paragraphs. So if you pause the video again to read this next paragraph. So this next paragraph now does start with the topic, engineering design process, and also there are elements that hint to the need um, about an increase in success rate and um, the existing methods can lead to problems later and therefore the need for new design products. This is this first power, this new first paragraph is starting to introduce the topic um, and it has good flow. The one thing that I would say is that um, there could be more detail and more supporting points um, to expand those claims but it's heading in the right direction. So again, pause the video and read these next two paragraphs to the introduction. So having mentioned concurrent engineering in the previous paragraph, it now goes on to explain what it is or state its importance. Halfway down that first paragraph, it says, in many researches and journals conducted by various authors, that phrase is just, um, is very wordy and it's unnecessarily wordy and could be written more directly. 
also they've made the claim that various authors, but there isn't the they haven't got any referencing of in there to support that claim. The other issue here for me is um, paragraph unity. So the first paragraph was about kind of what concurrent engineering is, and it and that it's an important management tool, and then it ends with how does what is concurrent engineering? How does it help achieve the desirable results? So we're still trying to establish what concurrent engineering is and how it's important. And that's then flowing into the next paragraph, which again, it's saying now, telling you a bit more about it. It's a systematic approach. And again, telling you that it improves customer satisfaction. So these two paragraphs are both kind of trying to tell you the same thing. They're both trying to tell you what's in, what it is and both trying to tell you why it's important but neither are doing it very um, effectively. Both feel quite superficial, that they're just telling you a little bit of information, but not really going into much depth. What would have been better is to have one paragraph explaining what it is, then the next one um, just focusing on why it is important. And that would have given more scope for um, expanding and giving more detail. Okay, so if you read this next part of their introduction and then um, we'll discuss it. So in this um, paragraph, lots of terms are given, parallel design, software infrastructure and support, understanding of the environment, morphological charts, um, lots of information is given, but to a non-specialist reader, it's not very helpful at this point. You're kind of hit with a lot of new terms, but they're not explained and you don't really know why you're being told them. This is the kind of information that would be much better coming in the um, literature review and explained properly there, rather than rushing, rushing it at this point and overloading the, um, the reader at this point. Okay, this is the last paragraph before the... Um, aims and objectives and it's now telling you that they're going to focus on the leisure boat industry. This is the first time that they've kind of suggested they're going to focus in that area and they haven't justified why the leisure boat industry is particularly important. So that's, they should have done that earlier on in their, in their introduction. As we now um, move to their aims and objectives, you can see that they state that it became apparent that the subject of the boat building facility layouts and assembly lines required in boat building is a novelty and hence they'll be tackling it in this course. So this is where they're not going in a linear fashion in their argument. They're now going backwards to say this was an important topic. But the reader is left unconvinced because they haven't said it in enough, they haven't supported that, those statements and it needed to come earlier and to be expanded and supported so that then you arrived at the, um, at the aims and objectives already aware of why there was a need in the boat industry. Then they stated some their objectives, a number of objectives, and they're clearly given as bullet points. The point that I'd make here is um, when you're listing points, you need to use the same form throughout. So they said determine, analyze and that's the same form but then you've got after identifying which is a different form you need to use the same grammatical form um, when you've got a list okay now we're going to turn to look at the second um, example once again if you just pause the recording at the start of each slide to give you time to read it and then play it again and I will um, give some thoughts on it. Okay, so this example does go straight into introducing their um, topic and the need for their topic. So it starts off with that broad statement, the marine environment is arguably one of the harshest um, that can be experienced on the globe. So it's a broad statement, but it's focused on the marine environment and the harshness of that. The second sentence, at worst, is ca characterised by blah, 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 then expands and further develops and supports that first statement. The following statement goes on to um, 
show the importance of that, the significance, the effect that has on um, vessels that are using it for long periods of time. And then we've got the focused example, for example, rescue boats like the Royal um, National Lifeboat Institutes. This is, again, not a randomly picked example, it's the example that they are going to be looking at. So it's a, a um, chosen with the focus of leading down to their aims. They then follow that up with the need. Therefore, we need to understand where the material and assembly is safe for long periods and to predict. So we've had a nice flow and the, the sentences move smoothly from one to the next. The next paragraph builds on but narrows in focus from that first um, paragraph. It's now looking at the forces and how that um, affects the, the lifespan as well. So that's building on the, on the last paragraph. The next paragraph, confronting the challenges of fatigue analysis, is particularly complex for high-speed craft. That's a really clear first topic sentence, and then the rest of the paragraph goes on to expand that point. We can see already that there is very good paragraph unity, and also those paragraphs are um, narrowing down in focus, as you would expect from an introduction. So the first paragraph was about the harshness of the marine environment and that's effect on, um, on boats. The second paragraph was looking at the, the effect of forces on boat structure. And the third one was looking, narrowing it down, not just any old boats, but looking at the high speed craft. And then the fourth one was looking at composite materials, which are partic particularly used in high, um, in small craft. So you can see each one, obviously it's on the same topic, obviously it's on their project, but they've each got a different focus. And by separating them out and having that paragraph unity allows them to go into enough depth and to really expand their, their, um, their points that they're making. Okay, and then this last pa paragraph before their aims and um, objectives gives you again, narrowing down to this, this issue of life, um, lifespan of the boat and the um, economic um, kind of objectives that people have and how that can be balanced against um, keeping things operating safely and understanding the lifespan of a boat. So showing you again the, the importance of it from another perspective. So now they've given you their aims and objectives. So the aims are often given as kind of, the overall aims often given as a, you know, broad statement. The objectives in this case feel a little bit um, brief. There's only really one main objective given. Personally, I find the objectives clearer if they're given as a list of bullet points as well, but that is um, personal preference. So just to summarise what we've looked at, the aim of the introduction is to convince the reader of the need for your, your research. Um, it also can set the essential context for an educated reader to understand and to enter into your research project. It all really funnels down towards your aims and objectives. So the reader should arrive at your aims and objectives, understanding key terms, understanding the need for your research, where it fits and why it's needed. Your aims and objectives should be clear I should be specific, should be clear. Personally, I think bullet points are helpful here. Um, and, if you, and if you do use a list of bullet point lists, you need to use the same grammatical form throughout.